Get ready for a time of healing and deliverance as we receive the word. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's good to be with you once again tonight and I trust God that there is a blessing with your name on it. The Bible says they move from strength to strength, every one of them appearing before God in Zion as we've come to his presence tonight. I know that we will move to another level of strength in the precious name of Jesus. But before I go into the world, before I get into the world tonight, I've got an announcement for you. Uh, some of you might not be aware, but um, every Monday at 9 p.m., we do meet on Zoom for prayer meetings. And uh, by the grace of God, from this Monday, that is the 2nd of August, we are taking our Zoom prayer meeting to IG Live, that is Instagram Live. And I really look forward to you joining us this Monday, the 2nd of August. Uh, so it's going to be a time of power. It's going to be a great time. Anything you're trusting God for, come with a heart of expectation. And I know that the God of heaven is going to meet you at the point of your needs and your life will never, ever remain the same again. Tell a neighbor, tell a family member or a loved one, let them know that uh, God will be present with us this Monday. So I look forward to uh, you joining us on Monday at Illumination Church London. Illumination Church London. So that's the uh, IG handle. So God bless you mightily. I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Glory to God. So with that said, um, I hope you're ready for the word tonight. If you're ready for the word, can you type in your chat and say, Lord, I'm ready. Glory to God. Um, hallelujah. We started a conversation, I think, about two weeks ago when uh, we started looking at the message, uh, uh, the series titled uh, The Inside Job, The Inside Job. And during this series, we have looked at the, uh, the message titled an enemy called conformity. I hope you have been blessed by that. During that message, we learned that conformity is not uh, the opposite of transformation. It is actually the enemy of transformation. Hallelujah. And then last week, we looked at the message titled Developing a Winning Mentality. Developing a Winning Mentality, where we said that for you to be able to accomplish anything significant in life, you need a renewed mind. Your mind needs to be renewed by the Word of God. And by the grace of God, we want to take this series to the next level. Somebody say next level. We're trusting God to take this to the next level as we look at a message tonight titled, Change is a Process. Change is a Process. Can you type that in your uh, chat with me tonight? Just chat, type it in the chat for me tonight. Change is a process. So if you've got your Bibles with you, can I ask you please to open to the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And we'll also be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. So at this point, can I ask you to just buy your hearts with me as we say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your presence in, in each and everybody's life and each and everybody's home tonight. Thank you, Father God, because we have gathered unto you, not unto any man, but unto you, O oh God. And Father God, we ask, we know your presence is with us, but Father, I ask tonight, make your presence known in the lives of your people, in the name of Jesus, in the life of every man, every woman that is connected with us tonight, and those who will be connected later in the future to this broadcast. Father, make your presence known. Let them see your mighty hand at work in their lives, in the precious name of Jesus. 
Let them exchange their weakness even for your strength in the precious name of Jesus. As your word come tonight, uh, let your word come with exactitude, accuracy, and precision in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Uh, Lord, we give you praise uh, and we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Once again tonight, the title of this message is Change is a Process. Change is a Process. We started with the message titled An Enemy Called Confirmation or Conformity, rather. And during that message, we uh, define what is transformation. Tonight, I would like us to start from there and also look at this definition again. So when you talk about transformation, what do you mean by transformation? Transformation, according to the dictionary, is uh, to change in form, appearance, or structure. It means to metamorphose. Glory to God. To change in form, appearance, or structure. It means to metamorphose. To transform means to change in condition, nature, or character. It also means to convert. Transformation also means to change into another substance or transmute. When you talk about transformation in um, science or electricity, especially, you're talking about to increase or decrease the voltage and current and current characteristics of an alternating uh, current circuit as by the means of a transformer. In physics, transformation means to change into another form of energy. According to the Greek, transformation or to transform is the word metamorphou, which is the foundation of the English word metamorphosis. And it simply means to change or to transfigure. And if you look at all the definitions we have looked at that we've considered tonight, you will see that the key word in transformation is change. The key word in transformation is change. So metamorphosis is uh, actually the... Uh, uh, when you talk about metamorphosis, some of us will be aware of it. You know, it's talking about uh, the, the the process that uh, a butterfly goes through, you know, from uh, an egg to the lover, the, the, pupa, the pupa, and then the adult butterfly manifesting. So metamorphosis is simply a profound change in form from one stage to the next in the life history of an organism. As I said, an example is uh, an egg becoming a caterpillar, then transforming to a pupa, and then the adult butterfly emerging. And when you talk of, about metamorphosis, there are two forms or two types of metamorphosis. The first one is the simple or the incomplete metamorphosis. And the second one is uh, the complete metamorphosis. Uh, in the simple metamorphosis, there are only three stages. And these stages are the, 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 the head stage, uh, the larva stage, or the nymph, and then uh, the full insect uh, appearing. But in complete metamorphosis, which will be uh, what we will be concentrating on during this series, actually what we've been concentrating on and we will concentrate on while uh, in the course of this series, the complete metamorphosis is a first stage process. And the first stage is uh, the egg stage, then the larva stage, then the pupa stage, and then the butterfly manifesting. The egg, larva, pupa, and butterfly. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and 1 John rather, I beg your pardon, 1 John chapter 3 verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Glory to God. So this scripture is saying in essence that we are going through a change. 
we have not yet attained the ultimate level, the matured level that God has in stock for us. We are moving from glory to glory as we see it in uh, our reference scriptures. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we are on a journey. We are in a process. Can you type that in your chat with me tonight? We are on a journey. We are in a process. And that process is the process of transformation. So it is the will of God, ultimate will of God for us to be transformed from where we are to where God wants us to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's quickly look at this process called complete metamorphosis. Once again, the title of this message is change is a process. Change is a process. Any form of change you require or you desire in life will not happen just like that. It will take time because it is a process. And when, because it's a process, you have to follow the course of this process, the step by step. You do your part and the Spirit of God does its part. Glory to God. So we're talking about the process of complete metamorphosis. And I said complete metamorphosis is a first stage process. The first stage is the stage of the egg and then the caterpillar, which we call the lever. And and of course, uh, the pupa, and then the adult butterfly emerges. So the first stage is the egg, and then the caterpillar. The main function during this uh, stage of the caterpillar is to eat. The main work of the of the of the of the caterpillar is to eat. It just eats and it eats ravenously. <laughs> Glory to God. He just eats and continues eating. And then after a while, it uh, goes into a cocoon called um, a pupa. Hide, it hides itself under um, a leaf or underneath uh, the, 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 the branch of a tree or under the, the root of a tree. And then during this time, it hibernates. And this is where the development is taking place. So during this time, it is not actually eating, but making use of all the food that it has eaten. And after a while, the adult butterfly emerges. And when the adult butterfly emerges, the main job of this butterfly is to mate and to lay eggs. And then the process starts all over again. So in essence, the main work of the adult butterfly is to be productive is to reproduce itself you do not talk about maturity even in spiritual things until you start producing babes are the ones who eat and eat and just take things without releasing but an adult is the one who produces and makes contribution Glory to God. Glory to God. So until you start making contribution, you don't see yourself as a matured person. And you know, when you talk about maturity, we're not even talking about age per se. Maturity is in responsibilities. Maturity is in what you carry on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we talk about uh, uh, transformation, True and lasting transformation is a process. We've seen that. And it is also from inside out and not from outside in. Many of us are looking for changes in our life or for a change. And we are looking at external things to bring uh, the, the, the change. Oh, if I have that thing, then I know that I've arrived. If I have it, I know that God is good. No, 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 no. God wants to do more for you than just give you stuff. It is the change that happens in your life or in your heart that actually breeds uh, true transformation. So that is why we say transformation is an inside job. That's why the title of this series is The Inside Job. Transformation is an inside job. It is not an outside job. The transformation we're talking about is from out, inside out, not outside in. Anything that is outside in 
or the type of transformation that people, you know, uh, that, that is outside in. It is not true transformation. It is a makeover or a makeup. It is a paint job. It is what some folks call packaging. Packaging, just making the outside nice, but the inside is valueless. There is no value on the inside. That is one of the things that, you know, uh, when you look at the law in the Old Testament, it is more of an outside in job. Thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. For you to know that uh, uh, to, to please God, you have to stop doing this. So it is more of something you do external than to, 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 to have an inner inner peace. You know what? You cannot gain inner peace by what you do or you do not do. You can only gain true inner peace by the workings of the Holy Spirit and reliance on the Word of God. It is by what God has done and what Jesus has done for you on the cross of Calvary. That is what brings peace and eternal peace in your heart. It is not by the things that you do. Am I saying that you should go and be misbehaving? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying in essence is God first. The blood of Jesus first. What Jesus, the price Jesus has paid. The transformational work Jesus has done on the inside of you. You have to rely on that before you can see any external change. Hallelujah. So when you talk about true transformation, it is not from outside in. It is from inside out. I said an outside in job is a pain job. It's makeover. It is make believe. Jesus called it the whited sepulcher. Hallelujah. Inside are the bones of dead men, but outside they just made it so beautiful. Glory to God. If your inside is not beautiful and you are beautiful on the outside, it's a matter of time you will be exposed. That is a disgrace and shame waiting to happen. So first of all, take care of what is on your inside. First within, then without. First within and then without. First within and then without. First within. What are you carrying? What is the Holy Spirit? What work is happening on the inside of you? Something on the inside. Uh, walking on the outside. Oh, what a joy fills my heart. Glory to God. It must start from within, people of God. Not from outside in, but from inside out. Glory to God. A proper and true transformation is usually irreversible. An attempt to reverse it could damage or destroy the object or the organism. When a butterfly comes out and emerges from that cocoon, you can't put it back and, trans you know, and, and reverse that process and make it a caterpillar. Or you make a caterpillar, you know, push it back in the eggshell. It cannot happen. If you try that, you will kill the organism. A truly transformed life cannot be reversed or is not easily reversed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that is the redemption work or the redemptive work that Jesus has done for you. When you have been redeemed in Christ Jesus, you are saved you know, from within. Hallelujah. You are saved from within. Then you walk it out. But it starts right from within. It starts right from within. And then it finds outward expression. Hallelujah. The man of God, Bishop T.D. Jakes, made this statement. He said, what you left in your children is more important than what you left for them. Amen. Whatever you put in your children is more important than the gifts that you give to them. And that is true. The character, the things, life lessons that you have taught them will serve them in greater stead than the gift, the Nintendo Wii, the PS5 that you can buy for them. I'm not saying you shouldn't give your children gifts especially within your means, whatever you can afford, give to them. 
However, the gifts is not as beneficial as life lessons and experiences you take them through. Amen. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that for free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have learned during the course of this series that the enemy of transformation is conformity. You sticking with the status quo or, com you know, compromising. That's another word for conformity. Compromise. Living a life of compromise. Well, whatever they want me to be, whatever they want me to do, I will do. Instead of looking to do the will of God. And the tools of spiritual uh, transformation, what I call spiritual transformers, are the Word and the Spirit. I will be rounding these up very shortly. It's a short message tonight, but I trust God to take it to the next level next week. So let's quickly look at the tools of uh, spiritual transformation. The tools of spiritual transformation, all spiritual transformers. The first one is the Word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, And do not be confirmed to this, world, uh, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Job chapter 23 verse 12, the Bible says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Glory to God. The word of God is your number one transformer. <laughs> Glory to God. is the first tool of transformation. There is no transformation without the word. No word, no transformation. No word, no transformation. More word, more transformation. Glory to God. Uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says that you renew your mind uh, through the word. It is the word you hear that brings the renewal of mind. Glory to God. Uh, the food that is eaten during the love stage or the stage of the caterpillar is what is eventually used to create the wings, the legs, and the antenna, the antenna of the butterfly. In the same vein, the food you take in, I'll be speaking a bit more about this next week, the food you eat, the Word of God. When I talk about the food, I'm not talking about uh, physical food here. I'm talking about the spiritual food that you've taken in is what you will use uh, that will be used in the process of your transformation. You would have heard the expression, you are what you eat. If your body is glistering and shining and everything about you is healthy, it's because you are eating well. And if you don't look well, it's because you are not eating well. In the same vein, when your spirit is well fed, you will, be, you will be transformed. When your spirit is well fed, it's a matter of time you will become mature. You will get to a stage where you realize, I'm no longer a babe, I am an adult. You begin to commune with the Holy Spirit and you begin to realize that I need to do something. In the, in, the, in, 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 in the kingdom, I need to become whom God has made me to be. Glory to God. So the word of God is the number one tool of transformation. As I round up, let's quickly look at the second tool of uh, transformation. The second tool of transformation is the spirit of God. The spirit of God or the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So it is the Spirit of God that transforms us. He takes the Word on the inside of us. Sir. He takes the Word that we have taken in and He uses that Word to transform our lives. Uh, glory to God. So it takes the intervention of the Spirit of God to experience true transformation. That's why communion with the Holy Ghost is very important. Take time to stay in His presence. Take time to pray. If you are baptizing the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, take time to just pray and enjoy His presence. Commune with Him. 
Commune with him. Talk to him and he will talk back to you. Take time to meditate in the word. That is how you get your life transformed. The process of transformation for a believer is the renewing of the mind. We learned this last week. The renewing of the mind. That is like the pupa stage when the butterfly or the caterpillar is wrapped up in the, in the cocoon. The time when it stays, uh, you know, in isolation and hibernation to just allow the change to happen. I'll be speaking a bit more about this next week as well. So this is talking about the time you separate yourself in prayer, in meditation, and uh, just stay in God's presence. Hallelujah. And the ultimate goal of or objective of transformation is to reveal the glory of God. Everything we do in the kingdom is to reveal the glory of God. It's not for ourselves, but it's for His glory. Hallelujah. That's why um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, that we just read, the Bible says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Spirit of God wants to reveal, or wants us to reveal the glory of God wherever we go. So the ultimate aim and the goal and objective of transformation is to reveal the glory of God. It's not about you, it's about the kingdom. It's not about you, it's about God and His glory. Hallelujah. Just like the beautiful butterfly emerging from that cocoon, God wants you to emerge as a glorious one. The glory that he carries, he wants to put some of it on you so that the world can see that indeed this is a true son of God. Hallelujah. I want you to know something as I round up tonight that an untransformed life that is a life subject to conformity and compromise cannot glorify God. You desire to glorify God, you need to be transformed. If your desire is truly to please God and to glorify Him, then you need to seek transformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you get that? If your true desire is to please and glorify God, then transformation must be your watchword. Transformation must be something you pursue with every fiber of your being. Glory to God. So with that said, I hope you the desire for transformation has been stirred or is being stirred on the inside of you because I, you, can, you, can, you can take it from me. There is nothing tangible that you can achieve without proper transformation. Glory to God. So you're there tonight. I want you to just bow your hearts with me as we say a word of prayer. Wherever you are, I want you to speak to God. Ask him, Father, I receive grace for transformation in the name of Jesus. I can't do this by myself. I need you and I need your spirit. Holy Spirit divine, come upon me and bring about your transformation. Bring your transformation power. I stir up your transformation power on the inside of me. Your word, let your word come to me. I receive grace even to discipline myself, uh, to be able to take time to read and study, listen to your word and meditate in the word in the name of Jesus. I receive grace uh, even to be able to spend time with you, communing with you, praying and um, discussing with you that I may go deeper and that my life uh, may be transformed, that I may be whom you want me to be in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word with your people. And thank you for your people, for what they have heard tonight. Father, I pray you have made us realize that change is a process. Transformation is a process and transformation is an inside job. Father God, anywhere where we have been looking at outside the uh, uh, agents and elements for transformation, Lord, tonight we repent of such and we take our eyes away from such and we focus on you, Holy Spirit, and we focus on your word. Uh, cause transformation to start cause the true change that you desire for us. Cause that to start on the inside of us tonight in the name of Jesus. And let us 
begin to manifest your glory in every area and every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name,